Hi and welcome to another episode of Hair FNFC here on Vanilla FM and today we're starting 2029-2030. So I've just gone through the summer transfers. It's, it's not the end of August yet but I'm not planning to bring anyone else in. We've played a few matches already. Let's go to the schedule. So we are not doing too well I would say but um, not as well as I'd hope for because remember this year oh, I want to try and challenge for the title. So we didn't start too well, but I'm hoping things will change as the season goes on. Uh, we did go through to the second round of the Carabao. And we're going to play Southampton for that away from home. Um, yeah, so first things first, let's tell you about all the upgrades the club is going through. I think I need to go to Vision Board. There we go. So uh, the first thing. Um, is that we improved our youth recruitment. That was um, done at the end of the last season. I'll show you the level that we are at now at the moment um, in a minute. Uh, we are going through improvement of the training facilities as well. And the board then requested that if um, I would want to go through improvement of the youth facilities. So we're improving our grounds again, our training grounds again, for the second year in a row. I wasn't expecting that because I was focusing on just getting the youth recruitment and the stadium expansion done. But the board has managed to find money to do everything. And on top of that, on top of the training facilities being um, improved, again, the youth recruitment being um, adjusted, the stadium expansion is going to go ahead. But rather than doing it this year, they're going to do it at the end of the year. So the plan is that they'll start in the summer break and get it completed by the by September, so not quite for the beginning of the season, but within the first few weeks of the season. So that's the plan. And um, I wasn't expecting to get all of that, so we did quite well. We're not in the red, uh, although I think we will get in, in the red as the season goes on. Uh, we managed to find a new affiliate club as well. I'll show you all of that in a minute. And we got a bunch of staff in as well. Uh, we have one of the best um, finances. So we are not in the red yet. We managed to make a quite a lot of money in the off season. As far as staff, there we go. We have the best staff pretty much of the whole. Um, oh, I didn't realize we'd lost our chief scout. I need to sort that out. Um, we yeah. So we we got pretty much the best staff of the league. And the twenty ones are well staffed as well. And the nineteens well staffed as well. So actually, let's sort this out now. So if you go to recruitment, scout, um, I just want these two. And we're going to include all the stuff. In fact, I can sort by this. Okay, there's only one free here anyway. So Tony. Let's see if he wants to be our chief scout. I think he does. Let's remove that. And he's signed pretty much. And we'll just wait for the confirmation. So we've got ourselves a new chief scout, which is lovely. I mean, I could promote it, Julian, but actually just getting someone new in is fine. Uh, so yeah, so we're going to go with Tony. Uh, I don't even know what his history is. Uh, I guess that's the player in history. We want to go for this. Hmm. Okay. Uh, right, so that is that. So we, we got plenty, plenty of stuff being upgraded, which will be good going forward. If you look at the affiliates, we've got Chesser and Hyde as, um, I call them junior affiliates. I don't, I don't know what the right name for it is. Tottenham is still a senior affiliate. We have good training facilities and good youth facilities. Though Both of these are going to be upgraded in about two months' time. So they will be, I guess, great, both of them. Um, we already have the maximum uh, junior coaching, so exceptional ju junior coaching. And we used to have a limited youth recruitment, but now we have average youth recruitment. So I'm hoping to see that in April, our pool of players that we get is of better quality. Uh, and maybe from a few different nationalities as well. We have been having some um, youth people from different nationalities. But I think maybe with the average youth, we might get a little bit more of that. 
our stadium it hasn't been it's not on showing on this space on this page but the news item stated that uh, our stadium capacity would go to about 90,000 I don't know if it can still search for that um, expansion I don't know how you spell expansion like this jeez uh, stadium no okay it's gone it's too old um, yeah, so for, as far as the youth, we do have a few different nationalities. We've got like a Norwegian, a, a Finnish, and a, um, someone from Denmark. But yeah, I think we'll get more of that if um, we keep improving our youth recruitment. Right. Next thing, we need to talk about our transfers. So, uh, da, 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 transfer history. We did quite a few transfers in. A small amount of transfers out. These two were not by choice. So Ismail and Renato, they left on. They just agreed the con a contract to a different club. They didn't want to stay the club anymore, which is a big loss actually. Especially Ismail, he was quite a key player for us. Jensen Jones, we planned to sell. Well, did we? No, we didn't. We we kind of wanted to keep him, but he wasn't happy, so we decided to cash in on him. And you know, he was a pretty good deal if you ask me. But yeah, ideally we'd want to have held on to him. Um, let me take you through the squad. So, in goal, we still have Tyler Dickinson kicking about. I think he's going to be around for a while. He might even be around next season too. We have a new replacement for uh, a replacement for Renato, but he's a bit older. Alfie Whiteman. He has played previously... Well, I guess he started at Tottenham in real life. And then went off to Australia, Coventry. Yeah, so we just got him on a free trans transfer. So that's Alfie, Alfie Whiteman. Not a bad goalkeeper. On the right side, we still have TJ. TJ's been with us a couple of seasons now. And we got someone on a loan, Hacken, I think he's a Nugent. Yeah, Swedish player, 19 year old on loan to us from a, f a Swedish club. Left side of the fence. We've actually got a few options. So, we've got this guy for three months. He's going in November. Um, his name is Freddy Cowan. Uh, from, he's a, oh, he's not a new gen. Okay, so he's not a new gen. He's just a very young player in real life. Um, Crystal Palace player. And he's been through crew. He's been to Waterford. And now he's on uh, alone with us for a few months and on a permanent deal we got Harvey, Aru Harvey Aru Araujo and um, he came from Fulham in real life um, and he's been on loan in a couple of places we got him on a free deal so that's Harvey and then kicking about in the under 21s is the replacement for um, actually let me put the notes side by side so you can kind of see what I'm looking at uh, so, for f a replacement for Freddy, once he leaves in November, is Josh Powell. So, we've got Josh Powell as a backup already lined up. I mean, we might find someone else better in the winter transfer, but for that month of November, December, we have this guy just kicking about in. He's um, and in the end of 21s for now. Not a very good player, but um, it's fine for what it is. Central defense. We have uh, old faces and new faces. So we still have uh, for the what's that role? Wide center back role. Ross Davis. Still have him. Nugen. By the way, you can name Nugens if you go to the Patreon. Uh, I do put some posts on that sometimes. Uh, I've just done one recently where I compare the facilities and also the following uh, that we have um, in FM. Uh, like the uh, fan following and so on. So I did put some posts on that. And if you want to name a new gen, you go and sign up. And then I can name a new gen after you. Anyway, we bought him on a permanent deal. Ross Davis. And he's still with us. And then the other white centre back that we got um, is Gabby Kiki. He's probably retiring at the end of the season. He's one of our elite slot players. And he's been uh, originating in Cameroon. And then straight away he went to Belarus. And then he went to Moldova, and uh, he's been with us ever since. Well, he's been with us now. Oh, excuse me. Sorry, that yawn came from nowhere. Now, in the non-nonsense centre-back position, 
we have a player that's returning to us. So you might remember if you've been watching the series, uh, Max Ross. He's back uh, this time on a permanent deal, a Scottish player. And on a loan, we have Eddie Allen. So he's on a loan from Cardiff and he's, I think, going to be a pretty good player once he uh, develops. But yeah, he's on a loan uh, with us for a year. And then finally on the, um, the just the center def uh, defender role, we still have the same two. We still have Max Tiche. Um, and we still have Owen Gordon as well. So, on the left side, I've already talked about that, on the defensive midfield position, we still have the same two. Alistair Clifford, he was probably one of our most expensive players ever that we've got. And alongside him, we still have Don Dominic Ball, 34. I'm imagining, he'll, I'm imagining he'll retire at the end of the season. But he stuck around with us for one more. Uh, midfield position, we had to rejig everything. And this is another one of those where we've got three players, but in this case, one of the players hasn't arrived yet. So, we have Nathan Simcock. Um, he is a pretty good player. He's on loan from Bristol City, and uh, he's a pretty expensive loan as well. But yeah, he's with us uh, on loan. And we have Liam. Uh, pa -pa -pa, where is Liam? Liam, 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 Liam? Liam Gowan, also on loan. Um, he might disappear uh, in, in the winter transfer, we'll see. But yeah, he's on loan with us for a bit uh, from Alloa. Oh wait, sorry, in the film Killmark Knock. And then in the... Uh, I'm not even sure if it's here in the transfer, still in. And I think confirmed. Yeah, there we go. And then in January, we'll get Jos, uh, Josip Zagu... Zagu Oh, I can't pronounce this. It's a Croatian player. Uh, new gen, anyway. So from um, Dynamo in Croatia. I'm going to get him for half of a season. So we'll see how we want to rejig this uh, in mid-season. We'll, I'll look at the three players again and we'll make sure we rejig. Send one of them back. Because they're all low knees anyway. So we can send the one that I think is not going to make it as uh, better. As well as the others, we can send them back. Um, right side of attack. Uh, one change here, but the change that we made is just the player that's come back to us. So you might remember Seb Ferdinand from a long time ago. He was in Skybet League One for a season on loan. Um, and we still have Nathan Lamy, who was also kind of return ever a returning. We got him for free a few seasons ago, but he was in the club, I think, just before. Seb joined, so basically replacing Seb, and now they're both playing together um, on a permanent deal. On the left side, we still have the same two. We have uh, Alma Viva, the Italian young player, and we still have Riley Owen as well. So no changes in that. And at the front, we kind of took back a step, to be fair. We have a Max Guthrie, which has been with us since forever, almost, it seems. Um, so he kind of hops in between the under 21s and the senior team, but this year he's going to be in the senior team at least uh, uh, until the winter, and then we'll see, we'll, we'll reevaluate. And then we decided to keep uh, Riz um, Healy. He, we thought about selling him uh, in the winter transfers last year, but uh, we decided to stick around with him for a bit longer. Um, yeah, so that's it. So that's the attack. I wouldn't say the team is stronger. Um, I guess some of the defense, cent central defense, I think we've reinforced it quite well. But that's it. I think some of the other positions either didn't improve or actually went back a bit. The one I'm most concerned about is actually this midfield position. We, I think we went back a little bit on quality. But yeah, we'll, we'll make do with what we have. Um, yeah, so again, just to repeat, so trying to keep... Uh, team bonding as a as a thing. I've already lined that up for the whole year on a sat on a Sunday. Uh, uh, the team has a team bonding experience, and I'm hoping that will help us keep the morale up. And uh, I might even dabble in some community 
uh, outreach as well, just to see how that works with the dynamics of the group. We're going to play Crystal Palace next. Uh, actually, let me just look at where Crystal Palace are in the league. They are a good team anyway, so they're eighth at the moment, but I think... Have they been up? Yeah, they just got... Oh no, they finished last year in seventh. Okay, cool. So they're not as strong as I thought, but they're still going to be pretty difficult, and I'm predicting a loss, although I might be wrong. I'm hoping I'm wrong. So yeah, it's pretty good. Having all these upgrades to the team facilities is great. Um, it's going to mean that we get better players in our youth academy. Uh, it's also going to mean we um, develop our players in a quicker way as well with the improved training facilities on both camps. And um, finally, the stadium is going to allow us to bring in some small amount of income uh, um, as season tickets are doing really well. Um, I think we sold more season tickets this year um, than last year. So that I think I've um, from the, the the end of the season and the kind of the beginning of the season with season tickets and so on. So we get about nearly five mil a million pounds from uh, solidarity payment for playing the league, and would then get about four million from season tickets. So that's 9 million, million coming in in the um, off-season to not only cover up the, the debt that we accumulate over the year, but also give us the money that we had to make this possible. So all of these upgrades are possible because of that money coming in. However, because we're using that money for all those upgrades, it means that we don't have a lot left over for transfers. So I'm kind of compromising on transfers, depending, I'm kind of relying on free trades and loans in order to upgrade the facilities because I know that those are going to be important if we get promoted to the Premiership. So hopefully that we can attract, you know, really good players. So yes, I'm compromising that a little bit by not having the budget for transfers, um, instead having a, a budget more aimed towards facilities. But I'm hoping that will pay off. Um, I'm aiming to win the league, um, but I'm willing to compromise if that means we don't win the league because we focusing, we're focusing more our, our finances to, towards improving the club. That's fine, we can just sit here in the championship. We're making good money in the off-season. So sit here in the championship for a bit to develop our club as fully as we can. And then, when we think we're ready, we can crank up that transfer budget as much as we can and um, work on attracting those players that can win us the, pro the, the promotion. So, 2-0. Not the best performance we've had in the season, not gonna lie. But yeah, the championship, it's, it's basically the opportunity that it's affording us, is the opportunity to develop the club. So I'm not too sad if we decide to just sit on it and uh, still like play within the playoffs maybe. Uh, but um, not necessarily being at the top so that we can develop the club and get it ready for the Premiership. I'll have to make a comparison. I'll have to look and see what 
type of facilities the clubs in the Premiership have, like the competitive clubs in the Premiership, not the ones that are always yo-yoing up and down, but like the ones that are well established in the Premiership, in kind of mid-table kind of clubs. What kind of facilities they have, stadium sizes and so on, so I can kind of see what we need to aim for. As far as uh, the following, I was, I was talking about this, I've put a following comparison on Patreon. Uh, essentially, we start out with 15 followers, 15,000, sorry, 15,000 followers. And I think at the moment, the figure is more like, um, let me just change this a sec. Actually, I want this. Um, yeah, 15,000 followers to like 350,000, I think. So it's multiplied a lot. It actually hasn't grown in the last couple of years. It has <clears throat> diminished slightly, small numbers, small negative numbers every year. And I think that's because we got a huge traction once we were winning the leagues and getting promoted straight away, week, season after season. But because we haven't won the league or been promoted in the last couple of seasons, we just stayed in the championship, I think... You know, and there's nothing exciting going on, so we're not getting extra followers every year. Okay, seems like this one is going to be a loss, but that's okay. It's a long season ahead and we've got lots and lots to do still. I mean, the transfer window hasn't even finished, so who knows? Maybe in the next episode when I come back, I'll have some news about some additional transfers we might have made um, at, at the end of the transfer window. Looks like we're going to have to be playing with nine players now. Yep, nine players. Okay, let's just finish the game. I think we just count this one as a date to forget. One injured player after the five subs have been used up and one red card, so we're down to nine players. Cool, okay, right. I'll catch up with you in the next one uh, where I'll show you the how the season's going in, in the kind of the halfway point of the season. And uh, we'll uh, catch up then. Take care, bye-bye.